Hello, welcome to the iTrack webinar on the COVID-19 environment that we set up with associated process flows to help people with um, dealing with the COVID associated issues at the corporate and personal level. In today's webinars, we're going to cover what the iTrack environment looks like, what are some of the forms uh, included, uh, some of the reporting, and as well as any questions that people might have um, to kick things off. Uh, if anybody has a question during the presentation, you might want to ask it in the Q&A panel and we'll monitor that as we go. And we'll have time at the end for open discussion as well. Uh, I think the whole thing will probably take about 20 minutes. So um, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. So hold on a sec. All right, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Now, when you log into the uh, environment that we set up specifically for this, this will be the screen that most people will encounter first. Uh, we'll cover this uh, towards the end, but we're going to jump into the forms and talk about what's currently in the instance. Uh, we've provided about 15 forms and are probably working on more. And if you expand the entire section, you'll be able to see them uh, listed here. And we'll go through each one of them in the various sections that they're included in. Now, if you click on a section, it will expand the forms that are provided there. And then to get started, you simply click on the form that you want to go through. So I'll start off with the business continuity plan. Uh, the system will load another tab with a form. And what you can do is in, in the beginning, you can start filling out the fields. But um, as you scroll down, you'll see that some of the sections are grayed out. Uh, this is because our form is uh, built from other components and they need to be preloaded. So to get that expedited, I, we recommend just clicking the save button and that will open everything up. So and then I'll go through and talk about some of the fields and uh, some of the associated content in the form. So um, this form, the business continuity plan would be something that your company does uh, immediately if they haven't already and uh, potentially you could uh, do this throughout uh, the duration of the pandemic. Um, it, it looks at the various um, aspects of business preparedness uh, that you should consider in the current situation. So the reported date is the date you filled out the form so you can select the date and time from the drop down there. Uh, entered by will be defaulted to your name, but if this is being filled out retroactively or after the fact, uh, you can select different users. If it was filled out by a certain person and you're just doing the data entry, you can also choose and indicate uh, the various areas and facilities. So if you've got multiple locations, uh, you might want to indicate that. And um, some of the fields, when you select them, will bring up a pop-up. This is an example of that. So if you want to record information such as uh, the address of the location or the name of it, or if you're using mobile, you can also pre-populate the GPS coordinates. And this will uh, capture the, the header information for the form that then allows you to report on it down the road. As you scroll down, you'll see that this Preparedness checklist is quite lengthy and it contains different sections. Uh, this uh, is a visual representation. You can't interact with the fields here. In order to interact with it, uh, you scroll down to the bottom of the section and you click the edit button. What this will do is it will load up the screen and now you'll be able to say for each one of these items, what have you done? So when you interact with the different buttons, you'll see that they change color. And also afterwards, you'll see what happens to the checklist after we save it. And you just head on down, uh, indicating whether you've done or not done something. So in this case, if we select something that's in progress, that's a different color than the done. And then if we select not started, it's also a different color um, from the rest. Yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. And then you can change your settings if you accidentally clicked something. Some of the lines will also have informational bubbles, so if you hover over that, uh, it will give you additional information. And if there's actions that you want to take on these individual items, uh, you have to click the icon that has the down arrow. And what this will open up is uh, a few uh, options to select from. So you can in, uh, enter a finding uh, for the item that you have or have not acted on. 
And then you can also create an action. So an action plan is a separate set of processes that are designed to fix or correct something that you've identified is in need of correction. So this is an example of an action plan. So if you're uh, you're missing something as a result of doing this business continuity review, you might want to say I have an item to follow up with and you can enter in the description who it's assigned to the dates around it, the priority, and then this will kick off a separate set of uh, workflows which you can then action. You can also add attachments. So these are documents and you'll see these controls in various uh, parts of the system on different forms. They're uh, similar from form to form and uh, anywhere you see them, you're able to add them. So as you're going through and filling them out, if you save, you can always come back to this and do this at a later stage. But the items that you have actioned and the color coordination will now show up on the, the, the view part of the checklist. OK, and then obviously if you want to continue, you simply just scroll down, hit edit again and go from there. So any documents that you upload um, in the checklist will show up here as well. And you can also upload documents separately without having to go through the checklist. And similar with action plan, any items that you create above will all appear here, but you can also create uh, action items without having to select something above. And then typically at the end of these forms, we've also added a section where um, signatures are required. So if somebody fills it out, um, they can use the touchpad if they're using an iPad or their mobile or just like I did on screen with a mouse. So you can sign off and that uh, declares that um, you have uh, duly filled out this form and are able to continue. Now you can save this, walk away, come back, um, but once you're done, uh, you're going to submit this. So on the left hand side, you'll see control to move the form to its different statuses. Some only have two statuses, the draft and closed, and some have obviously review and implement actions uh, as dictated by the workflows. So I'm just going to submit this one as a demonstration and it drops off from my screen, closes the tabs, and now I'm back to the main screen where I can select the different forms. Okay, so that was the business continuity plan. Another form that will demonstrate would be uh, pre-work uh, assessment and monitoring. So this has different uses. This has uses for um, people wanting to come back to work. Uh, maybe uh, they've been isolated for a while. Uh, maybe they've come back from a trip. Maybe they're currently in isolation, whatever the case might be. You select the category that currently expresses what your uh, desired state is, and then you click the new form button. And again, this will load another form in another tab. And again, this will have sections that are grayed out. So I'm going to click Save in order to activate all those different sections. So once that's done, go through and see that it's got the date, it's got who it's entered by. You can uh, select one of your managers to report to. Uh, you can also change the classification after the fact. So I chose the classification uh, when I started this form. But if I chose incorrectly, I can go ahead and uh, select that categorization. It'll tell me that it's changed it. And then you continue on down the form. So again, you can record the area facility. You can record the uh, location. If your company has instructions uh, included in um, what is expected of them as far as um, contact, uh, quarantine, etc. This would be the place to display that information and the user would go and read through this. But ultimately this form is about the process flow around the questionnaire. So as you can see here right now there's no survey, no score. So I'm going to click the edit button. It's going to load up my screen with a set of questions that once I answer them it's going to provide a score and uh, informational result at the end. So this is the, your typical information regarding uh, quarantine and interactions. So have I been outside of Canada? No. Have I been in contact with persons that have traveled outside of Canada? No. Um, have you interacted with anybody that uh, is suspected of having COVID? No, et cetera. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna say yes or no to, actually I'll, in this first time, I'm gonna say no to everything. And what you will do, you can kind of see it here at the bottom it says calculation result zero. But if I save and close, it'll be a little bit more uh, informative after it closes the window. Just give it a second here.
There we go. So now we're here, she says everything's green and the result is zero. And now I am cleared for secondary screening. So that means if I want to go back to work, it would theoretically be allowed um, by my supervisor. However, if we go back to um, the edit section and maybe add a couple of these things as yes, you'll see that the calculation resort score has changed. And now that if I click close again, it's going to recalculate. And now based on that score, it's going to tell me that, that I might have a case of symptoms and I might have to self-isolate, not be allowed to go back to work. So from here, you can enter in comments such as, I've gone to the doctor, I've been tested, et cetera, so whatever's required. Uh, at the corporate level, this is where you provide that information. If you need to provide a doctor's note or an explanation or a copy of your test, you can um, add that in the supporting documents. If you need to take actions such as uh, quarantine or moving your, um, your location of work from the office to home, you can create an action plan for that, and that would be the different actions that you have to take. And again, similar to previous forms, there's that section at the bottom where you indicate your sign off. And now this form is ready to be saved, or if it's completely filled out, again, I hit submit. I clearly missed a field, so I'm going to scroll up and select a manager. Now it should allow me to submit. And there you go. That form now drops off. So these are more transactional, so they happen when they need to happen, but we also have a lot of forms in the system, uh, process flows around uh, daily uh, information. So those are uh, the two examples that I'm going to show next. So one of them is the daily interaction log and one of them is the daily check in. So daily interaction log, so I click on that and it gives me says it's a log to track the daily movements. So uh, what's currently being uh, talked about is social tracking or social tracing. So again, if I save the form, it'll open up the fields, the reported date. So if you're doing this every day, um, you don't have to change the date. But if you're doing these after the fact, you can alter the date. It'll pre-populate your name. Managers are required, so I'm going to select one of my managers. And here I can start recording the people that I've interacted with internally as well as externally. So when it's an internal list, you can search for individual people and then move them from left to right. And when I save and close, it will pre-populate that list. And if I've interacted physically with somebody else outside of the company, such as, you know, Bob the pizza guy, Et cetera. Um, I can record this information and you can add multiple people. So this is designed to record all possible interactions in case there is a case of COVID-19. These are the people that you would go and follow up with to make sure that they're not exhibiting symptoms. On top of the people that you've interacted, uh, you can also record the different locations or facilities or places that you've been. So uh, this could be anything. This could be places uh, at the physical location of work. This could be external places, right? So I can say I went to the office, uh, the date and time of the visit, uh, yeah, yeah, right? Whatever, whatever time it was, right? Duration of visit, I was there for minutes, et cetera. So the best way to use this form would be to in an ongoing basis. So that way you don't have to try to remember all the details just as you're going through. Um, you're filling this out um, and uh, the way the information is kept in the system, you can report on it. You can add any additional concerns, findings, suggestions, et cetera, in the box provided. And at the end, you also just provide a signature like on all the other forms. Okay. So this is an example of a form that doesn't have an intermediary step. So once you submit, it just goes to closed and that's your daily record. And now I'll pull up another um, form here. Uh, this is the daily check-in. So this is a little bit different. This is less about the transactional uh, recording of what people you've interacted with. This is making sure that people are okay working from home um, or um, in isolation or whatever. Um, the information designed to be captured here is around 
uh, their needs. Okay, so the reported date entered by the manager. These are fields that you've seen in other forms. So, and also behind these next couple of questions, there's just some simple workflows. So if somebody does require assistance or everything, it kicks off uh, a couple things and that way you can action those items. And it also records whether you've communicated with people. So for example, we don't want people being in isolation without talking to coworkers or managers. So if I have a record of people that haven't talked to somebody in a while, uh, that would indicate to the managers that maybe they need to reach out and make sure that things are going well. So if you are capturing the areas and facilities and locations, you can enter that here. You can also enter in comments. So if you do need some sort of support, you would say what you need, right? Maybe you need some equipment. Um, you need something for the office, it doesn't matter. And similar to other forms, you can include information here uh, as to you know, what is expected of them while they're working from home or being in isolation, et cetera. And so this is a pretty simple form. Again, it's designed to be filled out quickly, daily, and uh, at the end, all you do is sign it like all other forms and kick it on to the next step. All right, so uh, the other thing that happens quite often in these kind of times is people requesting to work from somewhere else. So maybe they don't want to work at the office anymore or they can't work at the office. So that would be a lot of alternate work location request. So I've clicked on that, loads up a form. I'll just hit it save now before I forget. And you'll see that a lot of the fields are uh, familiar by now. The date, the, uh, the person that it's entered by, the manager. And then uh, information regarding where you'll be working from. So you can enter in the, the address. So say I want to work from home and I want to, I want to work from home starting uh, next week. And, you know, maybe I only want to work from home for a week. Maybe it's indefinite, doesn't matter. And then you indicate what you're taking from the office, if you're taking anything from the office in this example, and uh, the reason. And once you've uh, filled out this request, it then goes over to management where they can obviously approve or deny something like this. So you can, as you can see, the staff will go from uh, draft to pending approval, and then if they approve it, you get a notification for that, and if they don't, uh, you'd also get a notification for that. Similar request to, wor uh, request to work from home or work for another location would be a travel request. Uh, that's obviously very important during this time where people uh, want to be limiting their travel, but you might have either personal or business travel that needs to happen. So you fill out all the information uh, as before, and then you say, OK, when do you need to travel? And so let's say I'm going from Calgary to an office that we have in. Um, in Edmonton or something along those lines. And need to go to the other office would be a reason for travel. And then it obviously launches into questions that would be specific to possible isolation needs. Uh, so you can say after that I'll be at home. We also isolate. This is again dependent on whether there is any risk in the travel that you're doing. So potentially if you're going to a place that might have some exposure such as another country, uh, that would obviously dictate the need for mandatory isolation. But if you're just traveling locally, maybe not. But let's say, hey, I'm going to be on the safe side. I'm going to say, yes, I will isolate and work from home. And same as before, after I submit this, this is going to go to a uh, manager for approval and then they'll say yes or no and that will dictate what you need to do. So I think the next form and the last form that we'll cover uh, is a weekly personal workspace inspection. So this has more to do with ergonomics. Since a lot of people are working from uh, home locations, you want to make sure that they're set up and that they're not getting things like repetitive stress injuries and just um, uh, discomfort that can lead to further problems down the road. 
So you'll see that this has a checklist as well, similar to some of the other forms that you've seen. So location can be my home office. Yeah. And as you look through the list, you can see it covers things regarding to do with my seating, the keyboard and mouse, the monitor, the work environment, work practices. So this is an assessment that I should take weekly. So I'll pull up this list and say, um, you know, my seat height is good, backrest is good, depth, tilt, etc. And then I'll say same mouse position, things are good. And mouse posture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But let's pick on one of these and say maybe one of these things that is not ideal. So I can say no, and then let's say I want to alter the the item in question. So monitor height. So let's say I need to do an action. Say so monitor stand. Okay, so I'll sign it to myself, for example. And I'll say, you know, I'll give myself a couple of days to get that figured out. And then priority, I'll say, you know, it's normal priority. Uh, let's say this is in progress because I've already started looking for one to buy. Uh, okay. And then if this hasn't been completed, you can leave it in the status of in progress, or if it is completed, uh, such as entering this retroactively, you can mark it as complete. But for now, I'm just going to say save and close. And then I'll go through and I'll fill out the other sections as well, just to complete this. And some of these may not apply, so in certain cases, you can enter in NA. And once you're done, you'll see that the section will reload and I'll show that color coding as before. And then if I scroll down, you'll see that I entered an action plan. So there it is. So that will maintain itself in the system until we close it up. And I'm just going to sign off and submit this form. So that there I go submitting it. And now that form is gone, but the action plan remains in the system and I'd have to action on it. So that covers kind of the, the highlight forms. There are other forms in the system. Obviously, we're not going to cover them all, but there is things like uh, cleaning checklist for uh, locations and surfaces, uh, tracking of the, dis uh, the disinfectants that you use for um, different surfaces. You've got um, process flows that are familiar to HSE uh, personnel uh, that are currently already in use, but not been modified for COVID use, so, such as your daily safety meetings, your incident reports, your quick actions, and we'll add other things into this environment as the needs necessitate. So a couple other bits and pieces before we finish. So I'll go back to this activities dashboard. So this would be the type of uh, place where you see the action plans that we created and assigned in this case to myself, but any other people that are having things assigned to them, such as managers, would see a listing of those things that we created. So there's the monitor stand um, item that I created. And on top of the things to action, such as approvals, we also have a uh, reporting. And so one of the things we wanna briefly cover is the connected Power BI that we have. So here I have another tab that lists the dashboards that we've created for this particular environment. So most of the forms have a tab associated with it, but if you wanna just think about the data that's being collected is also being aggregated in order for people to be able to report on it, uh, do things like approvals, corrective actions, those sort of things. So these um, dashboards, present that information in hopefully in a meaningful way. So you'll see the different forms being entered, who is entering, when is entering, um, are there attachments, who, you know, who's the manager that was assigned to it. You can see a summary of the COVID exposure for the, so the people that are currently in self-isolation or might be showing symptoms. You'll see that information and you're able to search and filter on this information as well. Um, different tabs will display different information. So for things like the daily interaction log, you would see the, the people, the heat map of the people that you most commonly interact with or which people interact with each other. 
And you can also take a look at things, you know, what people are reporting, are they doing things daily like they should be? Yeah, and this is another example of the data and what you can do with it. And if you just go down the line for the different dashboards, you'll see the information changes because uh, each form has different requirements. So these are pre-configured and you can use them out of the box. You just have to um, use them as we've built them. Uh, however, additionally, if you're one of our existing customers and already has your own dashboards, you can transfer the forms that we've provided into your own environment and then report against them however you like. So you're not forced to use our dashboards, but we've pre-built these ones in order to uh, be useful to you. So that's generally it. Um, hopefully that provides a nice high level overview of the information provided. Now uh, we're going to open it up for QA if people have any, any questions. And uh, a couple other things to mention is that if you have any additional questions after this webinar, you can just send us an email at support at neosystems.com. We also have a website uh, on our neosystems.com slash COVID-19. You'll see that we list information about upcoming webinars regarding this. We'll probably uh, link this video to this page as well and it lifts the process flows uh, that we have in the system and what category they're in. And that's some of the ones that I've covered. So, and you can also contact us through that page as well. So I'll just leave it open for a little while. If people have questions, uh, you can either ask away or you can type them in in the uh, Q&A panel and uh, we'll leave it open for a little while. Thanks for listening.